If you pay any attention to modern JavaScript frameworks like Next.js, you might be overwhelmed by how many different options you have to render content to the browser page. So let's talk about two of the most popular options, which is SSG or static site generation and SSR server side rendering. So let's start by getting a couple of terms that are going to be really important for how we distinguish these. The first one is build time. And that is when the application is actually built. Now, typically what happens is we connect an application to something like Netlify or Vercel. And every time we push code, it automatically runs a build and then deploys that new version of the site. So that build time is going to be executed on a build server somewhere or your host as you deploy. Request time, on the other hand, is when the actual request from a user comes in. So let's say the user navigates to the browser, they go to jameshuquick.com. That's the request that's being sent to the server, and then the response will come back. So that is request time. And that's really important as we distinguish between SSG, which is static site generation, and then SSR, which is server side rendering, because where they differ is what they do at build and request time, respectfully. So let's move on down and start to break into what static site generation is. Now, the majority of the important parts of static site generation happen at build time. So we mentioned we might deploy an application to Netlify or Vercel. These are two of kind of the de facto way to deploy many of the sites that we create these days. And so on Netlify or Vercel, we have a build server. And this is where it runs the actual build of our site. Now with a statically generated site or with statically generated pages, the outcome of that build is exclusively static files like the index.html, the blog.html, and then you may get down into nested routes or dynamic routes where you have blog slash blog one, blog two, et cetera. So the important part about this is statically generated pages at build time are going to already calculate or create those pages. And the outcome of that is going to be hosted on a CDN. CDN is a content delivery network. Netlify and Vercel take care of all this for you. And what that means is those files are going to be replicated all across the world. And what's cool about this is because they're replicated all across the world, wherever the user is making the request from, it's going to grab the file that's closest to them. So let's say I'm in the US, it'll grab a file that's in US East, probably in Virginia in a CDN there. If I'm in Japan, it's going to make the request to the local data center that has a CDN there in Japan or nearby. So that means that these pages are going to be already calculated. They're going to be, they're going to be replicated on a CDN and they'll be sent down directly to the user, which should improve performance and make those pretty quick. That's a lot of the benefits that came with static site, gener static site generators and what people have really enjoyed about them. But static site generation, has kind of led to some limitations that has brought us back to the idea of server side rendering. So before we get into that really quickly, we can uh, address the request time. So we talked about build time where we build these individual pages. Like we just said, as the request from the browser comes in, it's going to hit the CDN. It's going to grab the appropriate static file and it's going to send that thing back directly, which should make this a really fast process. So let's get into SSR, which is server side rendering. And at build time, if you're just doing server side rendering, basically what this does is it will create the server. And really what this does is it converts, converts server side code to the host platform. I don't know if all of that made it on there and let's move this over. So a lot of what these frameworks do is allow you to write server side code in a way that you're not creating a full entire node server. So a lot of it is with page based routing or file based routing where you drop in stuff into a file and the framework already knows how to handle that as server side code. What you may not think about though, is that has to be translated to something that the host provider can understand. So in the Netlify and Vercel use case, these are serverless functions. They may be edge functions on Vercel depending on, or Netlify depending on how you have it configured. But at build time, the framework is going to go and take the source code and translate that to a way that's going to be able to be hosted as server side code on the hosting provider, Netlify, Vercel, Heroku, Fly.io, whatever you want to do. It's going to make that translation to make this thing hostable on that uh, hosting platform. Now, the really important thing here is request time. Let's make this a little bit smaller. So inside of an SSR application, server side rendered application, you have an actual app server. Now notice if we go back up to the SSG, we just had kind of the CDN here, which its responsibility is just to respond back with files. The server's responsibility is to actually calculate 
what the files are that get sent back to the user. So let's take a look at this. Let's say we have a request come in from the browser for slash blog slash blog dash one. So an individual blog post sends that request into the application server. That application server now sends a request to the database saying, I need all the data, the actual content for this blog post. After it gets that, what the application server will do is actually generate this HTML page and it will respond back with that HTML page to the browser. So the important part is as the requests come in, the server is having to do some calculation on what the response is. With statically generated pages, there's no calculation. That calculation has already been done at build time, but with server-side rendered, it's now doing that calculation real time when the request comes in and responding back with that calculated file or markup, HTML, whatever you want to call it. So what are some of the trade-offs with this or downsides with this? Well, the downside is that the fact that you have that calculation potentially makes this slower. You can get into caching and other things like that, but instead of just responding back with a file from a CDN, since this application server is having to do work, that is gonna take some amount of time, which makes this process slower. Now, after you do this originally, you can have this cache and we won't get into incrementally static regenerated pages but that's a whole nother concept that we could get into in the future. If you're interested, let me know in the comments, but there are some benefits that come with this as well. So SSG is very beneficial for sites up to a certain scale because you're generating all these pages at once versus at request time for SSR, you're generating the page, which means you don't have to have a super long build time to build hundreds or thousands of pages. If you have a blog or a website that's that, that is that big, so if you have something that's really big, number of pages wise, this might make more sense. You also have the ability with SSR to add in authentication, to add in redirects, to add in a lot of different things that add functionality to applications. Now you can also handle authentication and redirection and things with client side routing and or with statically generated pages by using client side routing. But in my case, I prefer to handle authentication on the server, which means I don't have to choose loading states on the front end. I don't have to choose conditionally which pieces of information to display on the application side. I can do that on the server side before that content is already sent down to the user. So just to quickly sum up, SSG statically generated content at build time, it's going to build each of the individual pages for your website versus SSR, which doesn't build any by default. What it does is a translation to be able to host this code on the server or the hosting platform that you're deploying to. And then at request time, it's going to hit the database or hit a data source to be able to generate that content and respond back to the user. Now, what's also interesting about this is a lot of frameworks now have the ability to do hybrid rendering, which means for individual pages, we can choose whether we want it statically generated or server side rendered, which gives us all the tools that we need to be able to make educated decisions on the best way to render individual pages in our application. So that's SSG versus SSR. If you have any additional questions, let me know in the comments below. I also wanna share if you are interested in learning more about SSG and SSR. In my Astro course, which I just released about a month ago, we have two different sections. One is SSG focused and one is then converting to SSR and talking about all the things that we just talked about in deeper uh, scale and then also implementing things like authentication and some other cool features around this. So if you're interested in learning more about that and one of my favorite frameworks, which is Astro, you can check it out at astrocourse.dev. Anyways, if you have more questions about SSG, SSR, let me know in the comments below. I'd be happy to help answer those. If you have ideas for additional content that you'd like to see in the future, let me know that as well. Thanks for checking out the video and I'll catch you next time.